Hello, and welcome back to Suzerain with the King of Rhesia and Ramus Taurus. On today's episode, we're going to begin with a family visit to Iza. After months of promises and schedule conflicts, Vina and I were finally on our way to visit my cousin, Rico Taurus, at his palace in Re Iza. The city's main road was straight and impossibly wide, a relic of Marquean times when the city was a major trading center. I waved up the car window <coughs> to the crowds of citizens lining the road. Up ahead loomed the doomed library of the university. I domed. It's hopefully not doomed. It's a domed library, not a doomed library. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> I noticed most of the people who'd come out to see us were native Rhesians. Even on the streets of the city's Wessex Quarter, little war, war clots. We passed a street cleaner who was rapidly trying to scrub graffiti off the side of the building. I could just make up out the remnants. They read, House Taurus will fall. Vina didn't seem to notice. She looked lost in thought. Hugo's meeting us here too, right? Why do you think they wanted us here so badly? The invitation comes so soon after the zeal incident, it's no coincidence. I can't even remember the last time Cousin Rico and I pro properly spoke. When we were children, maybe. We rode on until we reached Palace on. Under Rico's stewardship, a formidable-looking iron gate had been constructed around the otherwise tranquil palace complex. His security led us through to the Duke's residence. A blindingly white building, with the flags of Rhesia and House Taurus hanging from every window. We walked up to the doors. As soon as the guards opened them, a pair of long-nosed Rhesian hunting dogs raced towards us, barking. Easy there, puppies. Bella, Bruno, sit. Both dogs promptly sat at attention, still as statues. I heard the sound of boots on tile as my cousin Rico approached. He was wearing an olive green tweet jacket and a flat cap. He gave me a quick bow of acknowledgement, then knelt and kissed Vina's hand. I was struck by his transformation from a gawky insecure teen to a broad soldier's paternally, paternally confident young man. Welcome, my cousins. It's been far too long. Greetings, Your Grace. I trust Father informed you of today's plans. We leave for woods in an hour. Wait, what? Hugo appeared from behind his son, a sheepish look on his face. Your first hunt as king. I wanted to be a surprise. You know how much I love hunting, but I wanted to have a serious discussion. We'll have plenty of chances for that. Nine-tenths of the sport is waiting, after all. Not when you have this. Not when you have this. He turned around and showed his KA-74 semi-automatic rifle strapped to his back. Hugo turned up his nose disapprovingly. Isn't that cheating? Boars are speedy, bastards. You'd be surprised, your highness. He smiled rakishly at my daughter. We have outfits prepared for the two of you. And your choice of weapons, of course. It'll be a good old-fashioned rifle for me. Hugo smirked at his son. You see, boy, there are still real gentlemen in this world. I do wish I'd known about these plans. I've never so much as held a gun before. Come on, come now. I'll teach you. It'll be great fun. Inside, Vina and I quickly refreshed ourselves and changed into the hunting garb that had been laid out for us. We stepped out to find two waiting jeeps. <clears throat> Vina, care to share a car with your old man? Rico swiftly interjected. If you don't mind, your majesty, I've had this card prepared for the two of us. He gestured to his side, who held the door to the first jeep open. The two of us stepped in. East of the palace, the landscape quickly turned hilly and green. We are entering the Brunna's Forest Estate, a private hunting ground reserved for nobility only. I turned away from the window to see my cousin smiling at me. I wanted to thank you for your understanding, your majesty. I know the Wessex were presume, pressuring you to denounce Su Amino. You were very wise to saw, wisely saw their witch hut for what it was. <clears throat> A false flag attack if I have 
if I ever saw one. I was me. <laughs> yeah, false flag. I. That's exactly what I was saying. I was. I am. My immediate thought before I thought of Sumino or anything like that, I was like, oh god, this is a false flag attack. It's gotta be. It's so many signs point to it. Like, I don't even. I don't. <laughs> This is, it's off, it's, it just seems like it has to be. That just makes sense. It could end up being wrong, don't get me wrong. Suomino could be the one to do it, but it just feels like it's more likely to be a false flag attack. It just makes sense. A false flag attack, if I ever saw one, well, it obviously planned the bombing. Killing a few of their own means nothing to them. They're like ants. Watch your mouth. It's that kind of language that made Well and suspect Suomino in the first place. It's just us in this car, isn't it? We can tell it like it is. Speaking of which, I'll let you on on a secret. Just prior to the incident, we were about to activate a branch of Suomino and Zeal. Ugh! I hope you're not still planning on going through with that. Why shouldn't we? Smolik was never going to hand Zeal over on a silver platter. We'll only get back what's ours if we put the screws on them. Of course, anyone we send up there would uh, have to operate in total secrecy. But wouldn't it be fun to mess with the Wessex? I can't condone this, Rico. No, your majesty. Of course you can't, he winked. Mm, no, I... No, I'm not saying that in like a coy way of like, yeah, I can't condone it officially. No, I'm not saying it coyly like, no, officially I can't. That's not code. If I hear about any Sumino activity north of the Welland border, I'll have your head. I understood. I was only trying to help. Rico looked away for a moment. The woods around us were growing denser. How are you faring as Duke of Iza, my cousin? Be honest. Rico eager, eagerly turned back towards me. I'm sure you've been kept abreast of the situation here, Your Majesty. The drugs, the violence, the open resistance against our government. It's concerning indeed. What can I do to help? I'm glad you asked. I've heard that in times of emergency, police from the Riesian Central Force can be placed under individual leaders' direct command. I petitioned your war and security council for such a transfer, but she refused. Lightly so, you should be cooperating with the greater province of Brennes. You mean with the Sazans? <clears throat> they can't be counted on to cooperate. If anything, they are actively plotting against us. I'll send you the petition when we are both back home. I trust you to do what's best for our city. We pulled off the road and continued some distance on a dirt path that wound through the pines. Look, I liked your group a lot, purely because you're actively pushing for us to get our lands back. I'd love for you to help me against Pales in the future. You know, some patriotism through fight back against oppressors, take down pales, and reclaim our territory. I love the idea of that. Come on, we can work together on that. But I don't condone this stuff against nations I'm trying to work with diplomatically. Can we just focus all that aggression on pales, baby? Like, aggressively... Aggressiveness on pales. That's what I, that's what I would like, personally. We came to a halt at the mouth of the grassy clearing with gently sloping sides, hunting blinds blinds lined its perimeter and my youth Hugo and I nicknamed it the soup turin at last enough politics talk we disembarked and Rico eagerly unlatched the back of our jeep Bella and Bruno hopped out and started sniffing the air caught the scent already my dears must be dozens of boars out there the other car pulled up next to us Hugo and Vina got out still in conversation so you see your highness knowing how to aim and fire a gun correctly is as useful a royal skill as knowing how to hold a salad fork Don't listen to Hugo, Vina. Your uncle's a notoriously bad, terrible shot. Hugo scowled at me briefly. We wa he waved his son over. I've bored you enough, your highness. I believe Rico is going to show you the ropes. I would be delighted to, if the king permits. He extended his hand to my daughter. It's not my decision. Do you want to go with him, Vina? 
Yes, I'd love to. We didn't even get a chance to speak at the coronation. Vina took Rico's hand with a smile. He picked up their guns and walked her over to one of the blinds, dogs in tow. Hugo shrugged. The two of us, it is, your majesty. As assistant hand... An assistant handed me a rifle. It was a Rezian made Datar 56, similar to the one I'd used during my summers hunting with Hugo. My son may aim for quantity, but men like us know quality is key. He locked and loaded his own Datar rifle. Its stocks had a gold emboiled bull on it. We climbed up into the hunting blind, opposite of Vina and Rico's position. And now we play the waiting game. There was a long stretch of silence, punctuated only by the chirping of birds and the occasional bark of Bella and Bruno in the distance. I may not like Rico's hunting method, but his dogs are second to none. They'll drive the boars out in no time. I can't help but think you had an ulterior motive for inviting us here. He calmly adjusted his rifle's sight. Of course, there's the nastiness of with Wellen, but more precisely, if my son and your daughter are to be married, they ought to spend time together first, or have you seriously, seriously never considered the possibility? Shockingly enough, the thought never crossed my mind. That is indeed shocking, your majesty. As you know, there are interests both inside and outside the country who seeks to snatch Rizzi away from House Taurus. Cons... Pfft, don't... Wouldn't be my... Consanguity wouldn't be my first choice either. But it's the only way to keep her family in power. <laughs> we don't need a Habsburg situation over here, okay? If you don't know the Habsburgs, uh, look up the images. Look up how sickly they were. How they died. They were like... The reason they became... Their nation weakened and collapsed is because they literally inbreeded themselves to death, basically. <laughs> um, anyways. The right alliances can make us more powerful than blood alone, and the wrong ones will doom us in history's dustbin. As your uncle and your advisor, this is my life advice. You may follow or disregard it as you choose. Just then, we heard a rustling sound coming from the woods. Bella and Bruno had found their quarry. A group of boars raced into the clearing, the dogs nipping at their heels, working in tandem. They forced their prey into the lowest part of the glade. Looking through my gun sight, I fixed my crosshairs on the group. I'm gonna shoot a boar. I took aim and pulled the trigger. The largest boy boar fell to the ground, the others scattered in all directions, squealing. Well done. As I turned away to reload, I heard a series of rapid-fire bangs coming from Rico's direction. I looked back out to the blind to see a group a ground littered with dead boars. Humph. <laughs> Not very sporting, if you ask me. By the end of the hunt, I'd racked up four kills. Hugo had six, and Rico had a dozen. He and my daughter were in deep conversation as they climbed down from their blind. Lisa, this, Lisa, that. I'm telling you, if Welland Civil War had happened while Grandmother was still in power, she wouldn't have set out with a welcome mat. No, Lisa would have honored Rizia and Wellen's long history of cooperation and shown compassion for those who suffered. You naive little girl. Everyone in Mercopa wants what the Rizians, what we Rizians have. The Wesit saw a chance to get it, and they jumped on it. He flung his gun on the ground in frustration. I'm afraid your daughter didn't shoot a damn thing on today's hunt, your majesty. She was too busy distracting me with her nonsense opinions. Vina is your intellectual superior in every way, you twit. You apologize to her. Now. He seemed to collect himself for a moment. I'm I'm sorry, your highness. I must have gotten carried away. We posed for photographs next to the boars we'd killed. The, the assistants began packing everything away. We'll eat well tonight. The chef at Palace Cezanne does an excellent braised boar with wine sauce. Rico, Vina... Why don't you two ride ahead and notify the kitchen staff? His Majesty I will be right behind you. Vina gave a pleading look. Why don't you go with your son, Hugo? I'll accompany the princess. Hugo raised an eyebrow. As you wish. Come along, Rico. Vina silently thanked me as Rico and Hugo departed. We climbed to the second jeep and headed back to the palace. Dinner that night was indeed delicious. Oh, boy. I don't like it. <laughs> 
that was that was hilarious. <laughs> that was that was honestly great. Uh, anyways, <laughs> Reza and Piri Businesswoman's Association highlights gender pay gap. A new report released by the Reza and Piri Businesswoman's Association (RIBA) reveals that despite the great strides our kingdom has made for women's rights, inequality persists in the job market. Men still earn significantly more than women. A gap that the RIBA report suggests that we be surmounted with the help of government intervention. We have United Cortana SSS monitors. <laughs> Geopolitico's Cayo office. In a move that has sent ripples through international journalism circuits, circles, the State Security Service of United Cortana has committed surveillance on Geopolitico's Kiwa office. The scrutiny publicly denounced by Assistant Secretary Tarkin Sili Iyoktake portrays features fractures within the Cortanian government, with the decision by Chairman Melyanev drawing fire for its implications on press freedom. The act of state oversight signals an ominous trend in United Cortana's treatment of the press, raising alarm loads about media liberties and transparency within the nation. I see. Is a police transfer. Approver deny Duke Rico Torres' request. Duke Rico Torres of Iza has requested the transfer of additional police forces to his direct control to crack down on the recent upswing in crime. These reinforcements would have been drawn from the federally controlled Central Police for Headquarters in Rizzi Imperia. So we had our conversations, we talked a bit, I heard my daughter's opinions of you, all that, and everything I heard has made me sure of my decision here. Go away. Yeah, simple as that. Uh, no. Okay, anyways, moving on. You suck. Uh, don't like you. Um, anyways, royal visit to the Scarlet Kingbird Festival. Every spring, the seaside town of Salabiz celebrated the Scarlet Kingsbird Festival. The vibrantly colored songbirds spent their winters in Xena, near the southern part of what used to be the Masor Empire. Every spring, like clockwork, they flew back from over the Gulf of Mordia to settle in Salabiz. Their, their return was celebrated with music, dancing, and lavish banquets, opened by, by a speech from the reigning Duke of, of Salabes. It was tradition for the King of Rizia and his family to attend. The sun hang, hung low in the sky over the arena Salabes, a hundred-year-old open-air venue, perched directly on the beach. Vinny and I sat waiting in the royal box as camera flashed in our direction. My daughter impatiently tapped her fingers on the arm of her chair. We hadn't spoken much since Iza. Don't worry, it'll start soon. The program announced a special guest. I wonder who it'll be. A fanfare sounded from the pit orchestra, and an announcer stepped behind the podium. This year, he said the speech would be given not by Duke Sil Salabes, but by the heir of House Cezanne. The audience roars as Manus Cezan got on stage. This was no longer the nervous young man I'd met in Portager's On. He radiated confidence as he stepped up to the podium. Greetings, Salabines. He waited for the applause to subside, then held up a hand for the audience to listen. The entire arena fell silent. The story of the Scarlet Kingbird is a story about trust. Every year, this tiny feathered creature travels thousands of kilometers to reach our shores. He doesn't know what perils await him on the way to his destination, nor what sort of welcome will await him there. Yet he flies on because something deep within his soul compels him to do so. An inner voice that tells him, this is your home. Now, the kid has charisma. Shh. Vina glared at me, then turned her full attention back to the man on stage. And what of those who wait for him? They have no idea where he's been, or how he knows to navigate to this exact same spot each year. Still, they gather here, scanning the skies for the first sign of his return. As if on cue, a solitary bird came flying towards us from over the horizon. Its plumage was bright red. A tear rolled down Manish's cheek. Trust. It's the only way any of this works. Even when we've been given no reason, even when our faith is tested over and over. A second bird followed, then a third. It's only when we place our trust in one another that we are able to find our way. 
The audience gasped as the sky over our heads filled with hundreds and hundreds of king's birds, their crimson feathers magnificently lit by the setting sun. Have you seen anything so beautiful? It's breathtaking. Rena sniffed. She had tears in her eyes as well. Once the sun had set and the birds had gone to roost, we made our way to the VIP reception in the neighboring pavilion. A big band was playing jazz music and Pina entered. We immediately found ourselves surrounded by local officials, celebrities, and members of the press. It was nearly an hour before I was able to sit down. Almost as soon as I parked myself in a chair, I noticed Manis Cezanne making his way over to me. Not in the mood to dance, Mr. Zazan? Manus smiled uncomfortably. I'm better off, off on the debate floor than the dance floor, your majesty. Actually, I've been hoping to speak with you for a long time. So why didn't you request an audience with me? He gave me a look that was equal parts hurt and puzzled. I did, through your Grand Vizier. The message must have gotten lost. Hmm. My Grand Vizier. Hugo? Hugo? Hugo, why didn't you tell me? Hugo, do you not trust me? Hugo, do you not trust me to reject his offers? I I've literally been nothing but, like, I've, 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 been a I've not tried to support this guy. I'm, he, I can say I'm our opposition, and yet you didn't trust me enough to let him come talk to me? Hmm. Is that some traitorous actions right there? He, Hugo? I don't know, man. I don't like Hugo, and I don't like Manus. You both, I don't, I don't like Hugo, I don't like his son, and I don't like the Cezans. You all, you all suck. You can all get out of here. No, none of you, no, all, all the leaders except for me in this nation suck. I'm the only one that's good at this. Well, actually, me and my daughter are the only ones that are good at this. My daughter's awesome. She's great. She's going to rule awesomely. Love her. She's going to do great. We are great. Everyone else sucks. And yeah, that's kind of how the world works, as we all know. But since we're both here right now, your majesty, I know what you and your family think of me. And I know that my position in government is symbolic at best. But I still think we have a chance to accomplish great things for this country. Who's speaking to me right now? The heir of House Cezanne or the Speaker of the Reason People's Party? The two cannot be separated. I joined the House of Delegates because of Lucas Cezanne, because my father's rash act of violence robbed the Reason of the peaceful transition it deserved. The remaining Cezans and I are in agreement. Our citizens need not shed blood to be granted a voice. The kind of change you're talking about doesn't happen peacefully. Look at how many corpses the century of evolution left in its wake. It didn't have to be that way. If the kings and queens of your father's generation had been willing to compromise, they might have kept their crowns. Rizzi already has the fame framework in place to become a true constitutional monarchy, a place where citizens have a greater say in lawmaking process, but the royal keeps their status and influence. I know I'm taking a risk by suggesting this to you, but I feel that unless change is made, we may face another uprising. I'm sure you're aware that removing any of the monarch's powers would invite the wrath of my relatives. I and the rest of the Zazans will provide you with the protection you need. Of course, I would never presume to tell the King of Rizia how the country should be run. Just know that should you choose to lead Rizia in a more democratic direction, we are prepared to back you. And if I don't, we will not go against you. But the longer our people are silenced, the louder they will be when they finally speak. The thing is, 
It's like, I'm okay with helping serve the people, but I also, if anything, want you out of less control. So it's like... Eh? You want to just go back to being... Hey, you're a noble. Let's just... <laughs> you never agree to this. Let's just shut the whole thing down. You're a noble. Let's work together as fellow nobles, huh? Who, who needs this stupid, um... This stupid house of delegates? It sucks. We should just work together as nobles and... And own this thing. That's what I think we should do, but... Whatever. You, you weirdo. <laughs> this democracy thing's a fad anyways. Um, anyways. <laughs> I understand what... Mm, I'm understanding what you're saying, but now is not the right time that you start changing the status quo. A disappointed look spread across his face. If not now, then when, your majesty? If and when the zeal crisis is solved, we may be able to revisit the topic. He nodded. Of course. Forgive me if I overstepped. It would be an honor to see you at the next House of Delegates session. I'll see what I can do. With a smile, he stood up and pushed back his chair. I've taken up enough of your time. If you'll excuse me, I'll fresh freshen up my drink. He turned around to head to the bar and came face to face with Vina, who was returning to our table. Her face was slightly flushed. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Cezanne. Nothing to excuse, your highness. I hope you're enjoying your time as Salabes. I was just speaking to the bartender. He's still trying to get the rest of the family out of Dirtia. I told him I'll s I'd see what I could do. Mana smiled warmly. That's very noble of you, but there's a thousand like him, and not all of them are lucky enough to catch the Princess of Rizia at a benevolent moment. He's right, we've got to tackle this problem at the root, not by granting special favors. Vina ignored my remark. The thing is, I agree with that sentiment. In fact, I think, you know, these people can come in, take up these jobs that we need doing. We're running, we're, some of our places are running out of people for jobs, so we need to get them in. And if we can fill up those spots with them, great, all the better for it. I just want to be the one to help do that as the monarch. I don't need these these rabble coming in and doing my job for me. I can do that. They can't. That's what I say. Your speech was beautiful, Mr. Zizan. Actually, it reminded me of an essay of Queen Eliza from 1883. On social contracts, yes. That was one inspiration. What were the others? The band began playing Sweetheart of Ventry City, an upbeat tune that had recently reached us from Arcacia. You know what? Tell me after this dance. She took a step towards Manus and extended a hand to him. He looked at me questioningly. Ugh. I... I'm not breaking my promise. I honestly... I, I would be more okay if you found some peasant, but... I said I would... Stop you from choosing who you want if that ends up going this way. Uh, a, a king doesn't break his promises to his people. You don't need my permission. Have fun out there. Vina beamed. Macus, <coughs> Macus. Manus took her hand and rose from his seat. Well, this is faster than the dance I've been learning. Do you know the steps? As a matter of fact, I do. I'll walk you through it. He led Vina out of his in, onto the dance floor. Cameras flashed as the two of them started dancing. I wonder if the photogra photographers were capturing the look in my daughter's eyes. It was the same one her mother had given me during our first dance together. Ugh, I'm not a fan, but I don't break. A monarch does not break his promise. Reason Oil and Gas continues assessment of new gas field. The Reason Oil and Gas Corporation is continuing its assessment of the newly discovered gas field off the country's coast, tentatively nicknamed Arius. In cooperation with the Plesian scientists, a team of ge geologists has begun seismic surveys to determine the field's exact borders. It is expected that the surveys will be completed within the next several months. Sazon Air gives speech about trust, but can he be trusted? 
In a recent display of audacity, the Rezian People's Party leader and House Cezanne heir, Manus Cezanne, chose to grandstand about trust at the Scarlet Kingbird Festival, the largest annual event in Brennes. The choice of topics seemed steeped in irony, giving his well-documented skepticism towards the monarchy that forms the bedrock of her kingdom. For an audience that included His Majesty King Ramus and Her Highness Princess Vina, he gave an emotional speech that left many Sazan supporters teary-eyed, but that left us in the Herald wondering about his true motivations. One couldn't help but wonder if the decision to grant the opening speech to young Manus instead of his m the mayor of Sal Salabes was an attempt by House Sazan to capitalize on a royal event for political gain. Rafis Gregg's royal gossip, Vina dances at last. Well, now we know what it takes to get her highness off her seat and onto the ballroom floor. A quest from a dashing and dangerous young heir to the house is on. VIP visitors to this year's Scarlet Kingbird Festival retreat to the side of Princess Vina and Duke Manus, making goo-goo eyes at each other while cutting a rug. Just a polite dance or something more. And what, oh, what will our father stay? Stay tuned, dearest readers. I mean, I was there. If I wanted to stop it, I could have. We, I could have got us to leave. But, yeah. President Walker boosts welfare, faces economic challenges. President Dwight Walker's strategy closely, uh, choice, strategic choice to swell Arcacia's welfare spending through deficit financing has emerged as a double-edged sword, quelling social unrest but cultivating the nation's debt-to-GDP ratio to the brink at 90%. The physical gambit has earned a political dividends, quashing protests and booing Walker's approval ratings, yet it has simultaneously contributed to a dip in public support for Charles Devereux for, of the Reformist Union. The Walker administration now faces the daunting task of upholding social welfare commitments while steering the Arcasian economy through an increasingly precarious physical landscape. Meeting with first team on Toro. Uh, Gulkinist pilgrims demand access to Morella border. A considerable congregation of devout Galcanist pilgrims from Dirty and Marilla has congregated at the Point Dirty border, a crossing seeking entry to Rezia for the sacred pilgrimage. Allowing this pilgrim to cross into Rezia could boost global image as a bastion of tolerance and compassion. However, these groups may intend to visit holy sites that are currently restricted under laws. We're going to allow the passage. Um, alright. But we are going to have our meeting with Rusty Montoro in the next episode. I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell button. And as always, peace.